up at my friend James' house. We're going to take you guys through a home workout at his place. Um, because a lot of you guys have been struggling with sort of finding motivation, finding ways to make your workouts intense at home. So we're hoping that this video um, will be able to help you guys um, achieve that. Now James hasn't done any weight thing before, he doesn't have any muscle. So don't laugh at him when you have a look at his physique. and training while dealing with quarantine lockdowns and isolation so um, this video we're going to um, go through a chest and bicep workout that, that James has written for us um, now James for, from all the people that have, that have trained with um, over the years James is probably the one that trains with the highest relative intensity um, from anyone I've trained with. So it's going to be great to see how someone who trains with a very high intensity, sort of under normal conditions, when they have access to a fully commercial gym, trains when they're heavily restricted to simple equipment like a barbell, some crates, some bands, um, and a few light dumbbells. Training has definitely taken a bit of a different stance um, obviously you're not in a commercial gym you're not training with all the same equipment that you usually have i would just say plan guys like track plan um, set everything out in front of you even plan times you know so have workout times which we're going to do today we'll put on a little timer um, and sort of make sure that you're uh, hitting sort of the same intensity that you would hit in a gym i think they're really good points i think the if i take a sort of summary of that it's try to make even with limited equipment, limited space, try to replicate your previous training conditions as much as you can. Mm -hmm. So don't let your rest times get lazy. Don't go and check the TV mid-set or, or sort of between sets. Um, yeah. Maybe get, get in your same gym gear. Don't go and do your workout in your pajamas. Yeah. Or like use headphones if you have to. Try to make the, um, the, the con training conditions as similar as you can. Um, under the constraints that we have, because um, it sounds like you sort of there's, there's very the only really difference that's sort of not your training is equipment. just the equipment. Yeah, yeah so so the apart equipment. from that, you've sort of tried to keep all variables as consistent as possible. What are you doing with your nutrition at the moment? I have my calories are a smidge over five thousand at the moment. All right, more food. Mm. <laughs> Um, my appetite is very poor um, and that's because I'm closing in on the final stages of this mass phase. Um, I've got three weeks left, including this week, um, so I'm at that point where body fat's pretty high, leptin circulations are, are quite high in the, um, in the bloodstream and that's yeah. sort of keeping me feeling quite satiated throughout the whole day. Um, and there has been a lot of um, eating when I don't necessarily feel like eating. I've had to default to, to getting a little bit more calorie dense um, food options in my diet and that's caused my fat intake to come a little bit higher. So a little bit more olive oil, a little bit more peanut butter, coconut oil, um, because at this point, um, having a higher fat intake and a little bit more calorie dense diet so I can get in the calories is, um, um, a more uh, is a superior option to 
keeping with high volume foods, but not consuming, being able to consume the necessary the, amount the of calories, calories that, that I need to keep growing. Um, and I'm, I am at my heaviest um, of all time. I weighed in um, at 109 this morning. Um, so, Shoot, boy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. It's, it's the heaviest I've ever been. I'm, I'm hoping it's the most muscle that I've ever had, but um, we won't know until um, we diet it down. Mine's a little bit more structured at the moment. I'm getting ready for a show at the end of the year for October. Um, I'm having four meals a day, which is very different to my sort of previous um, six meals, chicken and rice and broccoli, sort of old school bodybuilding style at the moment. Jackson's taught me a lot um, on flexibility and, you know, sort of going towards this sort of science-based approach. At the moment, just eating about three and a half thousand calories, trying to strip down a little bit, um, and and eating those, that three and a half thousand across four meals. It's like eating four meals versus eating six meals is more beneficial because they're larger meals. I'm getting, I'm having, uh, I'm feeling fuller between the meals. When you get stomach dust distension, so I'm not sort of saying bloated, but mm. when you activate the stretch receptors in the gut, when you have a larger meal than usual, um, the satiety response tends to be um, more significant and longer in duration. Um, so if you think about that in the context of like a dieting phase where you're sort of trying to manage hunger, it actually makes a lot more sense to lean on the side of a less frequent meal timing like you've suggested so, and then and you've just worked that out in, in your own experience yeah um but in when you when you tend to look at the research and discussions surrounding meal frequency um when you're calorie restricted and you're having six or seven meals a day as would be done with sort of um a lot prep. of famous bodybuilders of, of yeah, um, prep, previous prep. times yeah in prep um tends to what happens is that the the meals are very small yeah and you just don't really get any acute satiation from that meal. Yeah. And it ends up being a situation where you're constantly clock watching for your next meal. Mm. You become extraordinarily food focused because it's, with that frequent, basically, even though the meals are so small, you, you, can, you can never go longer than two hours without being, needing to sort of prepare a meal or sit down and eat. Yeah, I've found um, myself in that trap before with the six meals in previous preps bursting now and so we can switch back to my my nutrition now is like doing those six meals i was finding myself at the same calories probably 12 months ago um a lot hungrier than what i am now it doesn't even feel like i'm dieting or getting leaner but i am across <coughs> doing like a four meal method rather than a six meal method um and spreading my calories out mm -hmm. and i'm still eating uh like two, 210 grams of protein 500 gram of carb and about 80 gram of fat mm -hmm. every day and it's just being in larger meals and having more flexibility. So today um, we're gonna do chest and biceps. So we're gonna do a floor press and then we're gonna do a fly. We'll then do biceps and front delts. So a front raise and just a dumbbell curl. So we'll probably do some push ups on the floor to failure. We might add some weights to that um, and then finish off with some more biceps on a, a wall curl. James is one of the best bodybuilders in the country and he's doing push-ups. So if you are doing your home workouts and think you're too good to do push-ups or you're too good to do some banded curls or some banded exercises or some low load exercises, I would, have a, I would be having a serious reality check uh, with yourself. If, if the best guys in the country, if it's good enough for them, it's absolutely good enough for you. Exercise number one, we got a floor press. It's taking the chest through most contracted position first and only working that top range. Um, we, we would do three sets of 10 is planned, um, but we'll get a bit high reps because we don't have the weight today.
number two, we've got our flying uh, dumbbell fly. So this is taking the chest through a more stretched position. So the bottom half of the range, and then we're super extending that with a front raise. bicep curl you can use barbell if you want we're supinating um, getting full range we're not thinking about elbow shoulder flexion or um, shoulder extension we're trying to keep the elbow fixed in one position and work on the range of motion through the joint not the range of motion through the muscle group <laughs> Um, we add a little bit of weight just to make it a little bit harder to finish off the chest because that's our last chest exercise. Um, three sets of just failure, so um, you can do body weight, add some weights, um, even go to knees to make it easier, but just get really fatigued the chest at the end. Yeah, and I don't know if you caught our last set Gordo, but for guys who lift weights fairly regularly, those made out of piss. So yeah. if you don't think you can get a solid workout with a bit of weight on your back and push ups, then uh, you're kidding yourself. Hour 16 for, I think it was 21 working sets, which is about 27, 28 sets in total when you include warm ups. So um, it's only like two minutes a set, so it's really short rest. Um, we tracked everything here. I'm not endorsed by these guys, but Strong App. Um, we track it all there. We picked all our weights from that. Um, so that has time on there as well, but it also tracks the weights. So if you can track and keep, some guys keep a training log. Um, Doing that way, we knew what weights we were choosing. It made it quicker to get to the exercises. Um, it was all planned out and set and ready to go. And that's the workout, so I hope you got something to take home. Yeah, um, just as a final note on James, um, super tough, challenging workout, uh, comparable to the difficulty that you'd be able to achieve in any full-blown commercial gym. Um, so I hope that can be of some value to the peeps struggling with the, the gym workouts at home, whether they're, they're restricted by the equipment or they've just lost a bit of their, their motivation and flow. Um, so if you like these style of workouts, if you got value from it, from it let us know and um, we might be able to bring some more content similar in the future. Well, it's been nice knowing you, Vegeta. Oh, shut up! <laughs>